It's long been the dream of many an electric car fan or advocate to reach a point where electric cars aren't seen as some weird subpar relation to an internal combustion engine vehicle. A point where electric vehicles are not sold with some weird ad campaign that sort of tries to make excuses as to why it's different to all the other cars offered by a particular automaker. A point where automakers actively produce electric drivetrains for mainstream vehicles that can not only compete with other drivetrain variants in terms of performance, but don't cost the earth or look weird to do so. When that point is reached, we'll hit a massive tipping point for the electric car industry. But while some would say we've already reached that point thanks to the Tesla Model 3, I think we're about to hit it in large parts of the world. And it's got a lot more to do with the variety of choice in the various markets than it does one particular car brand. It's got a lot to do with sticks and carrots and making sure people don't feel they're giving up something in order to go electric. All of this is happening today, and I'm about to tell you about it. But before I do, a little acknowledgement. Of course, the increase in electric vehicle popularity, the transition from weird and nerdy to mainstream and trendy, is because of Tesla and the work it's done changing people's attitudes to electric vehicles, as well as work from a few other automakers. Model 3 is Tesla's most popular and most affordable electric car to date, and hundreds of thousands of fans around the world either already own one or are about to own their own Model 3. That alone might be seen as a tipping point by some people. But while Tesla represents a volumetric change in the market, and one which should be applauded, I think the tipping point comes from a different part of the auto industry. Mainstream automakers making mainstream cars. And if that's the tipping point, we're about to hit it. You see, it's all very well and good to say that Tesla and the Model 3 is changing the world and the way we see electric vehicles, because it is, and that's very true. But it's short-sighted to assume that everyone who buys an electric car will ultimately end up buying a Tesla Model 3 or another Tesla. If our brains worked like that, we'd all end up buying the same thing all the time. They don't, and we don't. Instead, we like to have a variety of choices. In the automotive world, each buyer has a different set of wants, needs and desires that must be fulfilled by their next new car. And thus, we have many, many different vehicles to choose from. Until recently, however, electric hasn't been part of that choice, but now it is. And that's super important because a tipping point can only happen when a variety of different people across society are given a variety of different options to choose from. And at that point, more people can make a purchase decision that both suits their needs without compromise and things start to snowball. That comes when automakers start to make all electric models for mainstream customers or launch new models which are either all electric or have the option for an all electric drivetrain. And in Europe, that's now happening, which is why I say we're at a tipping point. In the past few months, we've seen Peugeot launch the E208, a car that's been launched alongside a new incarnation of the 208 hatch, and it just happens to be another powertrain choice, as we once picked between a 2-litre or a 1.5-litre engine, for example. The Opel e Corsa is another good example of this. Because Opel is now part of the PSA brand, it does share much of its DNA with the E208, from the 50 kilowatt hour battery pack to 100 kilowatt CCS quick charging capability. Nevertheless, these two models are now offered as a powertrain option to mainstream buyers for a mainstream model. A few years ago, that was unimaginable. Mini is about to do the same with its electric Mini Cooper. And just this week, Peugeot unveiled another electric vehicle, its own electric SUV variant of the brand new Peugeot 2008 crossover. Again, just like the other models I've mentioned, it's an all-electric version of a brand new model that will be offered alongside other fuel types. The reason for this sudden influx in electric vehicle designs? Well, it's partly due to legislation. Automakers are being required in many markets to make more electric cars and to increase the fuel economy of their fleets, something that electric cars are good at helping with. But it's also to do with FOMO as more and more automakers try and beat Tesla at its own game. And as the old saying goes, a riding tide lifts all ships. Even automakers who aren't directly trying to compete with Tesla, there are many, 
they're also getting in on the act because of their own rivals building electric cars. Sadly, in the US, there are fewer automakers doing this all, although there are a few. Even though the US isn't leading the electric vehicle push nationally, however, legislation either being passed or considered in many US states will require automakers to make and sell more electric vehicles anyway. But Nikki, I hear some of you say, those electric models are only being made to satisfy zero emission mandates. Automakers won't be serious, buyers won't buy cars they don't know about, and it'll all be bad. To that end, I'd suggest that yes, you may be right. While some automakers are deadly serious and have invested billions into making the transition towards electric cars, others are less interested. And dealers may or may not help automakers sell electric cars, and they may or may not push buyers away from electric cars. But here's the thing. In places where legislation requires automakers to make more electric cars, those automakers also have to sell them in order to avoid fines, which in turn results in crazy cash-on-hood deals, crazy lease deals, and lower sticker prices for new customers. Right now, that's happening in parts of the US. But as buyers, that's okay, because most people get behind the wheel of an EV and then they stay behind the wheel. Essentially, once you've experienced electric, you're less likely to go back to petrol. Many Fiat 500e early lease holders, Fiat did some crazy leases back in the day that made the Fiat 500e as steel as a commuter car, ended up going on to other electric cars when they gave their Fiats back because they didn't want to go back to a gasoline vehicle. At the end of the day, that experience, plus a wider choice, makes for a pretty compelling tipping point. And assuming these vehicles are made in large enough volumes, and battery supply issues are dealt with, I think that translates to a near future where electric will be as common on the road as perhaps diesel was not so long ago. What do you think? That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.